Welcome back everybody to my channel. This is Thumb FPV. Today we are going to go over another Snapmaker video. Now we are still working in Blueband 3.12.3, even though there's a new update out. Um, I'm in the middle of trying to see exactly what that's about. What we're doing right now today is I'm going to show you how to take any picture at all whatsoever and use it in the laser engraver. And that's really cool because you don't need to have a specific file, whatever type, path, G code, anything like that. Literally, we're going to go right here. Um, this may bug out on my computer. I'm just going to give you a little heads up. Um, sometimes when I go in the files, the screen record doesn't like to work, but we're going to go to the add file right here. I'll pop this open, and I'm going to select my picture of me holding up the shen drones thick frame i'm going to bring this in and it's automatically going to start processing at the bottom 50 percent it's going to take a second it's going to get going but it's going to convert everything to a certain extent there you go to black and white so over here on the side we have our black and white we have our grayscale. it'll take a minute to render um multiple settings over here Really cool. If, if you try to rush through it, the program will jam up. It needs a minute to think and actually process. So there we go. We have the grayscale there. Um, now we have the, um, the vector right here on the side. Another version of the thing right here. And then we have halftone. Like I said, sometimes it takes a quick second. Nothing big. There we go. So just a, just a different way. I mean, it, it gives you options, and I like that because you know that's that's cool. You get a variety. Um, everything may not work for every picture, but it's cool. You know what I mean? So, anyways, over here on the side, um, we're going to have our transformation. We have our move uh, for our X and our Y. Also on the side, we also have our size. So if you bring this in, um, regardless of what you're doing, you can crop it down into a different size and save it as a file. If you want it rectangular, if you want it square, that's fine. They both work. Um, I have not done anything like oblique or oval, circular, anything like that yet. This is just a, a heads up letting you know some things you can do. Uh, you can jump in here and you can change the size. Here's your width. Here's your height. Um, you can have rotate on it. You can have it print a different way. Maybe it's longer one way than the other because uh, the Snapmaker uh, printing bed is actually deeper than it is wide. So if you got something just a little bit bigger that you want to work on, that is an option. You can actually come down here, um, show original image, your type of print. So you can have your line, you can have round, you can have diamond. Let's check out round real quick. That is there we go. Um, now again, this does take a little minute for it to go through and process everything. 60%. Uh, it should pop right through and just be done here. Um, but this is something really cool. I've already went ahead and checked it. So you, you, what this is for the, the, the type is what it burns the picture as is what we're seeing here. We have the round. Uh, we had the line. Let's check out and see exactly what we're working with here for diamond. Because I'm really interested to see what this is. This is something new uh, for me. Like I, ha I have messed around with it a little bit. But um, some of the extra options I have not actually put to the print. So this right here, you can make it more like a checkerboard. Is what I'm seeing. Uh, we, however, are going to go ahead and we are going to stick with the line. Um, you have your size. You can have your thickness of it. The angle. Your threshold. Da 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 da. All that there's a bunch of things in here that you can play with and mess with just to tweak your settings and you know this that and the other thing whatever um, but for right now we are going to go ahead and switch back to grayscale because that's how I print so when this comes through here we're gonna go down just check a couple of things under the actions there we go we have that um, so you want to click on this when you're ready to move from the editing mode to the processing mode which the processing mode is what you're going to need to be able to take the picture and have it ready to be sent to snapmaker 2.0 in order for it to be able to do 
the print. So hitting process. Now we are in process. Uh, it is thinking uh, jog speed, work parameters. Uh, we have our high quality uh, density, jog speed, work speed, dwell time, da -da -da -da, multi pass, whatever. Um, again, unfortunately, hopefully they're in the new update for this. Um, <laughs> they've made it work just a hair quicker, but you'll see why it takes a minute here. It's like, there we go. All right. So generating the G code and what it does literally is pretty much just take out all, well, not all, but the majority of the background from what I've seen on how I printed and it focuses on the foreground, which is really nice. So we're going to sit here and wait for this. There we go. Almost done. 95.1. Come on. We're almost there. And that's pretty much what it does. Okay. Tool path was successful. Okay. So we're going to generate the G code. Pretty sure that's what we just did. Just double checking to make sure that everything is good to go at this point in time. This is going to take a hot second for it to run through again. But then when we're done with that, we are going to load to workspace. And this is where it looks a little interesting. I think the, the file line it kind of changes up a little bit. Um, maybe you see over here. I've already ran this through once just to do a little trial and error on it. Um, this is the second time that this is going through. So I tried something a little bit different, but the outcome is still the same. Um, we're just going to look at this real quick. This is the second path that I've ran on it. We're going to go ahead and use the one down here, though. We are going to use the 1589 9077. This is way too dark. I can't do anything with this. You can't even see what's going on. So you're taking you uh, back in the other settings. You uncheck the inverted box or whatever, and you bring up this. Don't want to load that. Okay. Move to workspace. There we go. So a little weird here. Um, as you can see, like at the top, where it just kind of like vectored off and like the background just kind of dissipated it did alleviate it. i wish i would have done it more here uh it doesn't really do too much for the gray initially uh in the foreground or the background as you'll see when it's done but as we are here right now um everything is set up and we are ready to go so you're going to go ahead and you're going to connect to See timeout. You're going to connect to your machine, and then you are going to send this to the machine when it is done.
boom there it is as advertised laser etch any picture and it's not bad looking either even though the person in it's kind of ugly I'm just joking this me bam look at that there it is any picture straight into Luban software and 3D printed right off the rip there it is so there it is everything that I had said print any picture it doesn't matter what it is just add it right through the Luban software when you are in the uh, laser etching part of the program and you can bring it right in and burn it right on to your wood plastic ceramic whatever you have going on uh, thank you everybody for watching this video and I'll have another one up soon